Okay, you've spent some time decluttering, but for some reason your home still feels cluttered and you can't quite put your finger on why. In this video, I'm gonna talk about two different ways that will help you identify what the cause of that is. I will talk about some of the common culprits and how you can fix them. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and let's talk about this invisible clutter, the stuff that is making your home feel messy even though you can't quite pinpoint what it is. Let's start with two strategies that I think are going to really help you identify what those issues are. After that, then we look at some of the most common culprits and how to deal with them. So step number one for figuring out what the issue may be in your home. Maybe it's a specific room that feels cluttered or maybe it's just your home in general. What I want you to do is, step away from the space then walk into it and see where your eye is drawn first what do your eyes rest on and is it for a positive reason or is it for a negative reason so you may walk in and the first thing you see is you know maybe family photographs photographs of your kids or your kids artwork or something that makes you feel happy that is the focal point of the room that's great but if it rests on something negative something that just doesn't make you feel great or if your eyes do not know where to rest if there isn't kind of one or two focal points if they just seem to dart around and see things all over the place that is another indication of what may be causing the clutter in your home strategy number two then and i really do not know exactly why this works but it does and that is to take a photograph of the space for some reason that helps you see it with a more objective view it helps you to see it through fresh eyes when you take a photograph of a room you see it completely differently than you do if you were just standing there looking at it all of a sudden you see those visible cords in the corner you see you know the stray toys that are left lying around it is amazing what you can see in a photograph that you cannot see in real life so those are the two steps walk into the room see where your eyes land and two take a photograph now, from those, you should have a pretty good idea of what is causing the clutter in your home. So I'm gonna go through some of the most common ones and how to deal with them. But even if you couldn't immediately identify what those things might be, listen through this list, see if any apply to you. And again, I will teach you how to fix them. Let me take you through my home. Okay, welcome to my daughter's room. Now this first one is a really quick fix and it is going to get you big results. And that is, too much furniture. You may have too many pieces for the space. The good thing about that is that even just getting rid of one of those things, because it takes up so much floor space, you're really going to see massive results. This was a problem here at my daughter's room. She has a bed, she has a bedside table, she has a little cubby for all of her toys, soft toys and things, a doll's house, she's got a chair, there was a chest of drawers, like there was just a lot going on in this room and it's not a massive room. So what we did was we moved the dresser, her drawers, into the closet. The closet just had a rail in it and then there was just dead space basically until the floor. And I would have loved to have, you know, built it out properly, but by moving the dresser in there, it gave us extra storage in the closet itself, but it also removed a big item from the room and helped to open it up a little bit. So look around your space and ask yourself, is there anything there that you could get rid of? Not necessarily completely, but even just move to a different room or something like that. Is there an extra armchair, a side table, a dresser, a bookcase, something that is just taking up a big amount of space without actually contributing anything positive to the room. Ship it out and you will feel so much better. Your room will have a lot more breathing space. Next then is knickknacks decorative items. I have already done a whole video on this, so I'm going to link it for you, but my best advice here is to uh, take all of the knickknacks out of a room, box them all up, take them out, then walk back into the space and see how it feels now. Does it feel a lot less cluttered? If so, that was probably the culprit. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you just have to chuck the box of knickknacks, but slowly add them back in, the ones that really have the most meaning to you, the ones that you really love the most, add them slowly back in and you will probably reach a point at which you feel that's enough. It can also really help instead of having them spread all throughout a room, if you have like little focal points, so you have one collection of knickknacks here, particularly if they're all kind of of the same collection, the same style, the same 
colors or the same like color scheme. That way your eyes aren't darting all around the room. You're not creating little clutter hotspots all over the place, but you're actually curating a collection of your best knickknacks. Same then goes for artwork, pictures, paintings, things like that. So this is my husband's office and he loves that look. He really likes having pictures, photographs and stuff all over the place. I do not, but that is his aesthetic. To you, this may be a source of clutter. Personally, it is to me, but I would say if you are like my husband and you just prefer to have your stuff out like this, you prefer to have lots of pictures and paintings, try and maybe keep them all grouped together. So maybe black and white photographs together, etc. You know, create a gallery wall of similar paintings or, you know, artwork photographs that have a very similar vibe. It can also really help if they have matching or complementary frames on them. My husband does not subscribe to that idea at all is just a total mishmash. Drives me crazy, but it's his office. He can do as he pleases. Very briefly, I want to jump in here and talk about the situation where you have identified what is causing the clutter, but you don't want to fix it. Let me give you an example. A big cause of clutter, hidden clutter, like hidden in plain sight, is labels or text, you know, particularly with products or food, things like that. So I talked about this recently when I was decluttering my pantry. It is full of boxes, jars, tubs, lots of different colors, lots of text. Yes, it makes it look more cluttered. And you know, if you can decant into matching containers, that's great if you have the time and the enthusiasm to keep that up. That's wonderful. It looks a lot less cluttered. It looks much more uniform. For me, I know that realistically, I would not keep up with a system like that. So yes, my pantry looks more cluttered with all of that stuff in it, but for me, I'm willing to accept that. So I just wanted to throw that in there because I know there are some situations where, you know, clutter might be a necessary evil or it may be something that you're just willing to live with because the alternative is just not something that you want to pump time and energy into. There are some things you can do to alleviate that problem. For example, you could take off some labels, you can hide things behind closed doors, you can put things into baskets. So that is a good way to kind of get around that problem, but there are some things where you're just going to have to live with them. One such thing might be toys. Toys are one of these things that just end up taking over a home. Very often we have rooms for specific things. You've got a bedroom for, you know, sleeping in. You've got a closet or a wardrobe where you put all of your clothes. You've got a living room where you watch TV, relax, etc. But toys take over the entire house. So what I would suggest here is try to keep them in one location if you can, or a maximum of two. So one specific closet or area and then some in the kids bedroom or most of the toys in the kids bedroom some in the bathroom for bath time this is one of those clutter problems that may just be like i said a necessary evil but again you can do some things like putting them into bins into baskets into tubs and putting them behind closed doors that will really help Another clutter culprit then, and I hate this one. This is one of the most common, and that is visible cords and cables. You probably noticed this when you were taking pictures of a room. The room itself looks fine, then you take a picture and all of a sudden you can see all of the visible cords in the corner. Sometimes a necessary evil, but you can maybe run them behind furniture, like up the leg of a table and around. Under this desk, it has one of those shelves where I can tuck all of the wires in there and not have them hanging down. And behind this I have a whole bunch of hard drives and they're all oh, a million cables but I have them all connected to one little USB thing so there's only one cable that comes out from behind that and connects to my laptop so hide or disguise them as much as you can connect them all into one you know extension cord or something and just have that one cable running out get yourself a wire basket or a shelf to go under your desk whatever you have to do but sometimes cord clutter is just a necessary evil it's the 21st century i do not know why we have not evolved past wires yet but here we are the next thing then, and again, this may be a case of necessary clutter, but that is anything that is visible on a surface, particularly in your kitchen. So all of those little gadgets, gizmos, appliances, cooking utensils, 
oils, spices, etc. that you have out on your counters, maybe piles of post, mail, papers, things like that, those are a big cause of clutter. Ask yourself how often you actually use that stuff, particularly in the kitchen. If it's used on a very regular basis, then yes, you may need to leave it out. But if it's not, if it's something that you only use on an occasional basis, like me with my smoothie maker, <laughs> that's something that you may be able to put away in a drawer or a cupboard. You only have to pull it out when you need it. If you're unsure, try putting it away for a little bit and see how awkward or not your life is as a result. For the things that do need to sit out, try put them in a kind of an out of the way place. So recently when I cleaned my kitchen, I talked about how we have most of our small kitchen appliances kind of tucked away in a corner, hidden behind a cupboard where you can't really see that stuff when you first walk into the kitchen. For small things then that you do know that you want to keep out definitely, but they're still causing a little bit of an eyesore, again, baskets, containers, things like that, things that are going to keep them partially or entirely hidden in plain sight. I'm going to lump the next two in together and they are essentially that the stuff that you have does not have a proper home, either because you haven't given it a home, it doesn't really have somewhere specific that it can go and this is a big one and I struggle with this all of the time. You get something, you're not really sure where to put it, what to do with it, so you just put it anywhere you drop it down somewhere so everything needs a specific home look around and i bet the stuff that feels cluttered to you is because it doesn't have a specific place to go to and part two of that then is that you're putting it in the wrong place essentially you're putting it where it doesn't really belong things that will look less cluttered are things that kind of stay with their mates. So you put like with like. So for example, keeping all of your toiletries together, and it definitely does not need to look pretty or anything, but keeping them all together so they're all in one place, you know where they are, you know where they go. Toys are a really good example of this. Like we've already talked about, they tend to spread out and take over your home. But also papers, if you do not have a central place to put all of your paperwork, so like a filing cabinet or an archive box or something like that, they will build up in little piles all over your home and that is what will make things feel cluttered. So have a home for everything, designate a particular place and keep like with like. And what that's going to do then, it just means that you will know where to put something back and it will all kind of live in the same place so that it doesn't end up spreading out and taking over your home. Everyone will know where it goes back to. Okay, these next two are going to make a big difference. And the very first one is the entryway to your home. And no matter what that is, maybe enter, enter through the front door, side door, back door, garage door. But if your entryway is cluttered, it's going to make the rest of your home feel cluttered. Even if the rest of your home is actually pristine, if the first thing you see when you walk into your home is clutter, that is the feeling that you are going to have as you continue through the rest of your house. By tidying up your entryway, you are going to give yourself that first impression of calm, cleanliness, tidiness, a clutter-free space whenever you enter your home. So that's about clutter when you enter your home, but what about clutter exiting your home? Do you have a good exit strategy? Do you have a donation box or tub or basket? An easy way to get stuff out of your home. This is one of my biggest downfalls, but I'm making great strides here, actually getting the stuff out of your house. Do you have an easy way to do that? When you find a piece of clutter, what do you do with it? Because if you don't have a system whereby it can leave your house, chances are you're just going to leave it there. Get yourself a box, put it somewhere that is easily accessible, and then use that. So as soon as you come across something that is clutter, you can put it in the box, and then the next time you're heading out, get rid of it. Okay, this next one, again, may be a case of just having to live with it, but that is anywhere where you would display information, invitations, leaflets, pieces of paper, things like that. So cork boards, command centers, whiteboards, the front or side of your fridge, all those places where you stick up pieces of paper, photograph, magnets, things like that. They get messy 
really quickly. Like with the knickknacks, try taking everything off and see how you feel. You can always put some or all of the stuff back if you feel that it's necessary, but if you take it off and you notice that you do feel much better, that will help you pinpoint the source of the clutter feeling. Then all you have to do is decide whether you can live without that clutter where you can get rid of it once and for all, or whether, again, that is probably going to be a necessary evil in your household. Sometimes I like to write things down on a whiteboard, so I keep one in my office and then my daughter will come along and just doodle on it. So this can end up with various different things all over it at any given time. So technically clutter, but I love it. Kindness is cool. And I'm gonna lump these next two in together. And that is essentially overall that stuff is just too crowded. So the first part of that is that you may have too many kind of colors or textures or something going on all together in the one place. Different colors, different patterns, different like materials. You know, one could be metal, then you've got wood, then you've got plastic, then you've got something else. If there's just too much going on in the space, even if there's not a lot of actual stuff there, it can still make it feel very cluttered. Again, this goes back to trying to keep like things with like, trying to keep similar type things together. And that does not mean that you have to keep all of the exact same thing together. Yes, you can introduce complementary colors, you can introduce a texture or something like that, but if everything is just a mishmash of colors, patterns, textures, that's what's going to make it feel very overwhelming. Do the things complement each other or do they provide an interesting contrast? You may not even need to get rid of something, it may just be a case of moving some things around so they make more sense in the space that they're in. For example, when I was designing this space, I did put all of the books together, but I tried to keep, you know, the colors very similar. So I put all the books with blue spines together, all the ones with yellow spines together. You don't have to go too in depth with it, but it's just a little bit more pleasing on the eye than if these were all just random. The other thing you will notice then is that I have left a lot of white space or space around things. So I very purposely did that. I have like one cubby that's kind of full of stuff again like stuff and then the next one is just like one or two things so there's those really pop and they really stand out but if i had put we'll say this cubby next to this cubby it would have felt very heavy it would have felt like too much stuff so i alternated put a lot of stuff here then balanced it out with just one kind of focal point and then moved on and that's how i did it i alternated so leave that white space around some of your things for the things that you really want to stand out the things that you really want to highlight let them do that let them stand out don't have them surrounded by other things let them be the focal point but it may be the case that you just have to do a little bit more decluttering in general and that's okay. Decluttering can be a process. You can do it in phases. You know, you go through one phase, you get rid of a lot of stuff, you learn to live with what's left, and then you can go on to phase two and so on. If you are really serious about decluttering, you really want to transform your home and get the best results possible in the shortest amount of time possible, then my decluttering course is reopening at the end of this month. I will leave a link for the waitlist where you can sign up. It is really going to take you through the entire process, including like the quick wins that you can get, the obstacles that you should avoid and how to avoid them and how to maintain the space after you have decluttered it. So hop on the waitlist. You will be the first to be notified when the doors do reopen. And until then, Gorev Mila Magwev. Agus Peggy Meshif Shiglua. Slán.